Hi, everyone, and welcome to another edition of Pama Yaw Crew Vlogs right here on Yachting International Radio. My name is Ria. I am your host, and I am pleased to introduce Tom Worthington of TAM Asset Management. How are you, Tom? Good. Thank you, Ria. How are you? Well, I mean, good, all considering healthy and um, working. So Thanks, can't get much better than that. No, exactly. So the reason we have you here today is that there's a lot of questions straight across the face of the planet about what's going on with the world marketplace financially, because I know that we're all feeling the effects. Some people can't go to work. Um, some people are worried about the Mediterranean season, whether your crew and just in general, small businesses, medium businesses, large businesses, this is affecting people straight across the board, no matter where you come from. Can you tell us a bit about what is happening within the world marketplace today? Um, well, to put it simply, they're all going down. Um, markets have dropped pretty much across the board, whether it's the US, the UK, Europe, emerging markets. Um, obviously, emerging markets was hit pretty badly because China is the biggest emerging market. And this is where the corona kind of had the, let, let, put on the plate first that corona is the cause of most of these drops, at, if not all of them. And obviously, coming from China, then going to Italy, there was actually a market shutdown in the US uh, to stop it collapsing, the S&P. Uh, the FTSE 100, the FTSE 250, they've all seen drops. These are all indexes, which are the biggest companies in, in the given country. So the FTSE 100, for example, is the biggest 100 com uh, companies in the UK. S&P 500 is the biggest 500 companies in the US. Um, they're, they're experiencing drops of 25-30%. Um, but it's not just the drops that's um, unusual, it's the volatility. So even though they're dropping 25%, Sometimes they're jumping back seven, eight, ten percent in a day, and then dropping back down to minus three again. So it's it's a very, very unstable market at the moment. What are people doing? Are are they keeping their money in the bank, keeping their money in in their their investments, or are they doing the typical panic thing? You know, like normal people like me running out. Well, I didn't do it, but normal people are running out and buying toilet paper and canned goods and pasta. Um, what are people doing in the financial world with their investments? Well, in the financial world, uh, in portfolios especially, cash seems to be the new toilet paper. Um, so everyone's rushing to sell everything that's liquid that is not taking a big hit. Um, if you're down 30% into an asset class, uh, as in your most equities, which are stocks and shares, um, then you will probably try and hold on to them so you can see the recovery out of it. However, if you're only down you know, 2 3 4%, like government debt, things like that, they're all selling off into cash. Everyone wants cash at the moment because it's not going to go up, but it's not going to go down. Everyone wants to kind of preserve their capital at the moment. So when you've got things like, you know, Adidas uh, sales down 80%, um, you know, Ryanair is going to take an absolute beating as well as most travel companies. Uh, you look at Flybe that just got a kind of semi bailout. They, they got told they didn't have to pay the taxes. They're probably going to go into that administration um, it's all going to have a huge knock-on effect. Now, the unknown for us is whether it's priced in to the market or whether it's going to shock people even more. Because we, this all happened in one quarter, which is quite unusual. So by the end of quarter one, so on the 31st of March, uh, quarter one closes, by the start of April, when everyone gets all these numbers, is it going to shock them or will they be prepared for it? That's what we don't know. Because if they're not prepared for it, we could see another drop of 10, 20, even 30 percent, which means the markets could be down up to 50 percent, a half of the value. Now, that's very unlikely. Um, we would I would imagine that most of the markets are priced in at least a contingency amount. You know, they might be a bit shocked, which might cause them to sell more. But we're actually starting to dip our toes back into the US, for example, now, because we're seeing the big drop and the whole story, the, the old saying is buy low, sell high. Well, do you think that the markets will recover fairly quickly when life starts to go back to normal? Or do you think that we're going to see, you know, this devastation carry on for, for another quarter, another two quarters? Um. This is a hard question. Um, 
it's it's more likely to bounce back quicker than let's say recession of 2008 or black monday because that was a financial based um crash so it was because of the financial system that the crash itself happened whereas this is something completely out of control that affects every sector and will most likely affect most geographical regions so you're more likely to see a bounce back um that doesn't mean it's going to happen because people will be scared and unfortunately for the since you know the 1940s we've not seen a case like this where you know there could be i hate to be pessimistic but kind of a small mass extinction um which i, I hate to sound i don't want to sound callous with saying this but this means that wealth gets passed on to the other generations so you know when you're talking about thousands and thousands of people dying then the, the, the money moves hands so that recovery will be very different to other recoveries because it's going to another generation. It's not the same, you know, that portion of generation that inherits money, for example, will use their wealth in a different way to the current generation or, you know, second generation. So this is something we've seen at TAM, especially is because our ethical has actually outperformed our mainstream, which is a very nice story. Uh, it means people being more social, socially responsible, more ESG. Um, and with the new generations, it tends to be younger people and females tend to be the head of the curve for people investing in ethical. That is good news. What I was wondering as well, though, is for those people that um, invest in currencies, with each country at this stage of the game doing their own bailout of sorts of, of their constituents, essentially, um, how is that going to affect the different currencies around the world? Um, well, I mean, the pound, I think it was on Thursday, reached a low of, it was about 1.04, about 5 a.m., um, which is the lowest it's been in a long time. And people were talking about possible parity, one for one. Uh, the dollar's going to probably see a stronger recovery before anyone else, um, just because it's, a, it's an equity-driven market. Um, it depends basically on where you're talking. Um, this hasn't really been explored in Australia or New Zealand. Australia being quite a big currency. Uh, the Japanese yen, I mean, there's 80 million Japanese. A lot of people are aware how big the country is. You know, that's almost twice the population of Spain. So it, it all depends on how hard the country is hit because mainly the quarantine because primary and secondary sectors can't really work during a quarantine. Tertiary sectors such as you know, radio, financial services, while they will get hit, um, they won't be hit anywhere near as bad as manufacturing or production. So if you've got you know, um, a car factory in Germany, they can't go to work without people at the factory, even though a lot of it's automated these days, things still can't be done and overseen because of legislation and they're not allowed to go to the factories production of food and things like that um china is already coming back and people are starting to go back to work but it all depends on how badly the country's hit so i think italy spain and germany are going to see a big hit germany is going to be a rare one because they've got such a strong economy especially in all sectors primary secondary and tertiary um that this would be an unprecedented kind of move for them because, again, they've not seen anything like this since the war. So we're looking at, really, overall, a bit of a time frame where we're all definitely going to suffer. We're all going to see a lot of changes. There's going to be a lot of questions and probably not a lot of people that can answer them when it comes to the financial markets. Um, it's, it's, I mean, it's, there's already a element of guesswork that goes into it or reading forward into a story and the more time you've spent in a you know in the marketplace and doing that kind of job then the better you get at it like most jobs um our ceo lester petch he's been through this will be his fifth crash now so he's very well placed to uh have a strategy where we protect clients against the downside even though we might not perform as well when market's going up when markets hit like this, we hugely outperform our benchmarks. I mean, you know, we run Shiria money as well, so Muslim approved money. Um, and actually, that's actually making money at the moment. It's not actually going down, some of the wow. portfolios. 
our defensives are down a, a lot less than you'd expect. You know, we're talking five, six percent here. Where when you're talking, you're exposed to markets that have gone down thirty percent. It's it's nice to have, um, let's say, a good team of experience behind this. However, having well, when you read what's already happened, it's so, something that no one can really predict unless you're reading, uh, you know, a Holocaust movie. Um, it's something that. We aren't personally, we've got no phone calls from clients uh, complaining because, well, first, we're outperforming um, the markets. And second, it's something that can't be helped. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not like um, we saw a housing crash like in 2007, 2008, or, you know, Black Monday or the internet bubble, things that were overexpanding and people were getting greedy. It's not been that case this time. It's been something that's been unprecedented on a global scale. What do you suggest to people in this time to do with their money and, and, and with their uncertainties, as it were? First, don't panic. Um, there's a saying that's said a lot in finance where, you know, if you lose 50% of your money, it's not 50% you have to make back. You have to make 100% back to, to go back to the same level you were. And if you look over any long-term period, the markets go up. If you take several data points, the markets go up over a period of time. In, in this case, it might be a year, it might be three years, we don't know. However, to have that recovery for markets go up, if you're part of that rally to go back up, then that means you're going to be making money if you're in the markets. If you're doing, we, we're doing something called pound cost averaging or euro cost averaging, depending on the market you're in. Uh, whereas you buy in at different levels, we're seeing very good pricing of funds at the moment and very good pricing of assets. So we buy in, you know, a portion here, a portion there, a portion there. And what that means is even if no one can time the market perfectly, but what you can do is make the most of the market condition. So if you're seeing cheap assets, we buy them at various stages, which means when they start to go up, that overall um, price that you've got is usually a very good market price in comparison to what you could have bought it for, let's say, six months ago. Um, Second would be definitely um, stay away from trying to stock pick at the moment because the choosing a stock or a single asset class, a single asset or a single uh, geographical region would carry huge high risk because of the volatility of the markets at the moment. So use a professional. So really, I guess the best advice is to be the same, the same sort of advice the doctors are giving as far as health, is just relax, stay home, wait it out, and things will get back to normal at some stage or another. Yeah, I, I mean, we're 99% uh, sure that it will get back to normal. It's just the when, we don't know. You know yeah. Next July, will it be December? Um, I mean, the doctors are saying the same thing. So, I mean, this coronavirus is affecting our finances. You know, the power of our money, it's affecting absolutely everything. But, you know, I guess I guess really that message is is we just need to wait and see. Yeah. And I mean, if anyone's nervous, a nervous investor definitely would not be a time to be in the market. Or if they are in the market, they want to only be in very, very defensive uh, strategies. Well, they can always get a hold of you if they've got any questions, I do assume. Uh, Yeah, we're happy to talk. We only work through professional intermediaries, so IFAs, financial advisors, banks, accountants, things like that. Um, However, we do do regular podcasts. Um, we do newsletters, so if you want the newsletter, you can email us, and we can put you on the on the list. And you can we're we're actually one of the only companies at the moment. Everyone seems to be hiding a little bit. Um, we think the we should be doing the opposite. We think in a bad market, clients want to hear from us. They want to see that we're not hiding. We want to see that we are being open with our information. We're, we're sending them negative numbers. We're sending, look, these are what our portfolios have done. You know, it's minus 6%, minus 9% on riskier models. But the markets that they compare to are minus 25%. Yeah. So even though you're down, you know, relax, because you're not down anywhere near what the market is. And the fact that they know we're not hiding and that we're out there, you know, trying to support them and, and there for any questions. Well, I guess the key is not to panic. <laughs> if you can, yes, definitely. 
<laughs> right. Well, Tom Worthington, I thank you ever so much for your time. We will provide an email address uh, when this interview airs so that if people do have indeed have more questions for you that I haven't asked, uh, they can get a hold of you and ask those questions. Yeah, I've got plenty of time on my hands at the moment. <laughs> I guess you would. <laughs> Right, you are from TAM Asset Management, and uh, we've been speaking about the world markets right here on Pama Yacht Crew Vlogs. Tom, thank you for your time. Thank you, Ria. My name is Ria. I have been your host. We'll see you again next time.